Hey kids, this is the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Goodman. We're going to talk about some things that you might see in church this week. This week, if you go to church, you might hear Jesus say in John chapter 16, a little while and you will see me no more. Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. And like, if you had a rough week, I guess that kind of sounds nice. But if you had a good weekend, it almost makes it a bummer because like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to weep and lament. I don't want to think about it if I'm actually having a good day. The the guy at the party that just points out all the things that give you cancer and brings up depressing news stories right after somebody else tells a joke, nobody wants to hang out with that guy. Don't be that guy. And if you don't even want to think about the possibility of suffering, a Bible that talks about suffering as naturally as the sun coming up isn't exactly appealing. But here's the thing. I'm glad that Jesus talks about this, even if I had a halfway decent week, because when you leave this up to your own personal preferences as to when you're actually going to talk about suffering. It's not too long until you find yourself avoiding the God who wrote it because it will crosses are gruesome. And uh, he talks about dying on one end, promises one to the people who love him, uh, uh, avoiding your neighbor out of fear when they suffer. Uh, it, it, it's not exactly love. But here's the thing, if we can't actually get close enough to God to confront this suffering that he does for us, it's going to be hard to see it in each other when we promise to each other to, to love each other and all the while still kind of struggle down here. I'm not saying that you have to spend every hour of every day meditating upon the pains and sufferings of this world. But when you pretend that they don't exist or worse, that if you really loved God, they won't exist for you, you're going to have a bad time. If you want Jesus' words to be true, well, he says, a little while you will weep and lament, but your sorrow will be turned to joy. If you don't want Jesus' words to be true, I, I get that. I don't want to hurt either. But all you really end up doing is trying to insulate yourselves against pain. You, you hide. You avoid your neighbor. And when your neighbor actually needs you, the only thing that we can think about is how to fix their suffering, how to stop their suffering, not loving and serving them in the midst of their suffering. And that is a natural inclination to, to sort of want to end somebody else's suffering. But if you can't get too close to somebody else's suffering, if you're so just completely overwhelmed at the thought of your own and you don't know where to turn away to, to get away from it, you get to actually hear what Christ says as, as a gift. See, our religion is not about escaping suffering, but enduring it, being brought through it. We have a, a, a religion that, that is, is about a, a God who saves us by suffering for us. See, if you have a religion that is only about escaping suffering or stopping suffering, ultimately you only have a religion about fear. If, if your religion can't exist in the face of suffering, you spend every day running from it. But a religion about endurance, it dares to live in the right now because it's assured of the tomorrow. Today, you might be weeping and lamenting, but your, your sorrow will be turned into joy. And it's because Christ who was crucified is risen from the dead. It, it lets us stare down the pains of this world and actually look through them. This is just for a little while. And even if it hurts real bad right now and all of time seems to shrink and this hurt just won't go away, we have a tomorrow to look forward to because Jesus has promised it. Hope looks to Jesus who laid down his life for us a little while and you will not see me and it's going to be tough because he goes to the father he ascends to rule at the right hand and, and i deep down really wrestle with this because i want to just go up to jesus and yell at him sometimes because i think i'm doing a better job of things than he could uh which is arrogance on my part lord have mercy on me a sinner but but really i want to go to to something concrete to to have my fears and pains answered mostly i want to go to something concrete to have my fears and pains ended and well Instead, he promises that he works through suffering by dying on the cross. And so that if I find suffering in my life, it's, it's not his abandonment, but, but rather another place where he works. He prepares the place where he has gone ahead to for you. He prepares the, the, the glories of the life to come for you. And he brings us day by day all the way through it. God does not abandon us to suffering. He loves us in the middle of our suffering. He promises that we can eat and drink his body and blood. He promises that we can gather around his gifts, that we can even sustain each other in the midst of this suffering, not as an end to it, but as a place where God would love us in the midst of it until we are finally brought through the cross and given Easter. This is a good text to have in the middle of Easter because we get to actually confront the fact that even though Christ is risen, it hurts down here. Christ was crucified, and, and I'm glad his part's finished. I'm glad that he is risen because... Our suffering isn't over yet. A little while and it will be. But for right now, I'm going to hang on to the things that are completed. The suffering that won my salvation. The resurrection that's it, this, that gives me security in the fact that I too will have my own. When all of these things are seemingly falling apart and you've been confronted with a God who loves you in the midst of suffering, you have a place to take your pain. You heap it up on the altar and you recognize God is not far from me. 
He is in his body, he is in his blood, and he will sustain me today and every other day. I hope you had a great week this week, but just in case you didn't, you get to recognize your sorrow will be turned to joy.